Ben Zinn with NextLevelGuitar.com. We're here again today with another of our Inspired by Video lessons. And uh, today we're going to take a look at some cool garage rock type stuff, fuzz tones. We got our fuzz box happening. We got our reverb cranked up and we're ready to roll. So, hey, you guys, before we continue on, take a look down here in the YouTube text box. There's a link for a free video lesson and a coinciding ebook that we're going to include for you. It's not available on YouTube. It's exclusively through nextlevelguitar.com. So take a look at that and we'll continue on. I was thinking to myself with this inspired video lesson concept, what would happen if I was in a band with just a drummer, just me as a guitar player and the drummer, and I got inspired. I thought to myself, how would I be able to solo if there's nobody playing any notes underneath of me? And that's kind of what today's lesson is going to be about. We're going to take a look at some ideas that you can use for playing in a situation where you're maybe just playing with a drummer or maybe you're just playing at home and you want to be able to play over something you want to have something to play on top of so let's start out by taking a look at the groove so we have some context and then we'll look at some of the strategies that get us going on some soloing first of all just playing this kind of low pentatonic garage rock riff here, pentatonic party. Just playing the sixth and fifth strings here, playing an octave. Coming down to the D. Open string, six and five together. Down to the fifth fret. up to my G power chord here. You can have variations off of that. Anything you can think of. Just basically kind of keeping that low open E going so we have a nice strong powerful riff. And as we want to transition to another section of this sort of an idea, what I'm going to do is utilize the open E string. And I'm going to play ideas on top of that ringing out. So I'm going to take a look at playing my scales or my ideas going horizontally instead of vertically. A lot of times when we learn a scale, we'll maybe learn it like this. Totally useful, but that's what I like to call our vertical way of playing. Equally as useful as playing the same idea horizontally. I'm going to be playing an E, sort of E bluesy sort of stuff here. So I'm going to start at the 17th fret and I want to visualize my scale going from here on down. Same scale, an E blues scale. Let's take a look at how that's going to work out. Now, the first concept that we can work with is just simply hitting that low open E string and then just working some cool ideas up and down that string. You'll see right away that it kind of gives you some context. It gives your ear something to latch onto, especially if you're playing, again, just on your own or just with a drummer. So we can go to town with that, just letting that note ring out, and it sounds much more full than it would if we just played. We just played without that low, open, droning string. So you can have a lot of fun with that concept. 
start to mix in some of your other strings if you can see where your scale lies there too. But what I really want to get into is kind of playing a bass line and playing some ideas on top of that. So to do that, we're going to want to use a technique called hybrid picking, where we're going to play with our pick and our fingers. My index finger and my, th my thumb here are holding my pick, and so their job is going to be to just sit and pump quarter notes down here on my low E. My other fingers, of course, are free, and they are going to be assigned the task of playing the other notes. And we'll, again, use our se uh, second string as an example here. So start out to get used to this technique, play your quarter notes, on your low sixth string and play the scale that I showed you with your middle finger or your ring finger whichever one of these fingers is free that you want to use and practice coordinating your your two uh, attacks here our, our pick down here and our finger up here so start with your quarters and now the scale Once you can do that, try playing your higher notes on the offbeat. And for further practice, if you want to really hone in on that technique, try alternating back and forth real quickly. And so on. You get the idea there. What that does for us is it helps create some independence between our two attacking portions of our right hand, and it sets us up for success in starting to improvise with this then we can start to do things like this. So as you can see, when we play a more musical phrase like that, we're combining playing on the beat and on, on the offbeat. That's what's going to make it sound a little bit more interesting than just working our scale up and down. Let's break down that example a little bit further. So again, you know, what's consistent here is the, the low quarter notes. That's not going to change. What does change is what's happening up top. So open, together, beat one, beat two. There we see our first note happen on the offbeat. And then we have a little bend happening there at our A note. Half step up and then release. After a while, once you feel comfortable with playing you know, your low string and your second string, you can start to get a few of the other strings into the act. Um, this gets a little bit trickier, but like anything else, as long as you just keep working at it, it gets easier and easier the more you do it. So here's one more example that we could do, kind of the same idea, keeping those low notes happening and now utilizing a different string. <laughs> First idea, I'm sliding here from 10 to 12, and now I'm utilizing my 10th fret here. There's the lick. That's probably a good thing to practice right there. There's the lick without playing your low bass line.
<laughs> so there we have it. We're inspired by not only the music that we're listening to, but thinking about situations. Again, you know, what happens if I'm, you know, the only guitar player, the only person playing notes? I got to come up with cool ways to fill out the sound. And hopefully you can take what you learned today and do that with your own playing too. So thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, make sure you visit our website at nextlevelguitar.com. We have over a thousand different video lessons there for you, uh, for beginners, intermediate players, on up through advanced. So check that out, and we'll see you back here next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.